What's up, everyone? Good morning. Happy Saturday morning. Uh, bright and sunny outside today and trying to kick off the day with a little positivity, uh, even though we are, uh, well, we're, we're in a little bit of a funk here. We got a lot of things going on in the world and uh, just trying to stay positive, trying to lift people up and also just really have people think about what they can personally do with uh, everything that's going on in the world. Um, so this isn't going to be a topic today on all of that. Um, we did that last week. Um, we'll probably do it again, maybe even a little bit tomorrow um, on our Sunday edition of our Coffee Talks. Um, but what we're going to do is today we are going to, uh, we're going to talk about testing. I think testing is really, really important um, because if you are able to test things, you generally get a result. And if you get a result, guess what you get to do? You get to look at the results and figure out what you need to do next. Uh, so much happens when you actually do something. Uh, you guys know I'm a big fan of taking action. Uh, but um, so many people still wait until they figure it or think they figure it all out. So the biggest thing that I could encourage anyone to do is to really make sure that you, uh, sorry about that. Maisie sees someone at the door, I think. Uh, so we're going to have to have to see what happens here. And of course this is live. That's how we do it here. We got a little barking going on here. All right. So, um, all right. Hopefully someone gets her under control. Uh, all right. So, um, but it's, it's a, it's a big deal to, uh, to really just do a lot of testing. Um, but a lot of people then will get hung up on testing everything and then they won't know what worked. Um, so what I want to do today is just kind of share with you, uh, just a, a couple of ideas that you can test, uh, and also to try to encourage you to put something out there. If you put something out there, you're going to get a result. If we get a result, then we can obviously ask more questions, right? And then we can, we can get more results. Um, so let's go ahead and see who's in the house here today on our Saturday edition of our, of our morning, uh, coffee talk. We've got, uh, James in the house. What's up, James? Uh, this one here, Facebook user must not have been confirmed through Streamyard. Good morning, Scott coffee and reading the carpenter. Awesome. Great book. John Gordon was on the podcast. Uh, was it last week, this week? I forget what week we're in. Uh, he was on recently and it was a great interview. Uh, Justin in the house. What's up, Justin? My, my fellow friend from Australia, Salem is in the house. What's up? Derek's in the house from Georgia is here. Yes. The dog is sounding, uh, is the sounding alarm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, the, the, my, my dog just likes to sit by the front door and look out that there's like a little, they call it a side light. And you can kind of look out the door and she likes to see people walk by. And when she does, she likes to just bark, even though she wouldn't do anything. Um, that's just her entertainment for the day. Ashley, what's up? Good morning, Scott. I have a quick question about today's Pinterest live portion of the workshop. Um, how long is the portion going to be today? We are going to shoot for an hour, but it may go a little bit longer. We've got about five different reviews of um, some of our students accounts. I think one of you, one of them is yours, Ashley. Um, and then we have uh, some questions that are already queued up and then we're going to open it up for live Q and a. Um, so that's only for people that are in the Pinterest traffic workshop right now. That's going to be happening at 12 o'clock today. That's why I'm going to try to make sure that we're done here by 10 30. Um, Cause I still have to do a little bit of preparing for that. Rebecca, what's up? Hi Scott and the morning crew. What's happening? Carlos, what's up from Arizona? How you doing my man? Uh, and then Karen says, I've got the coffee and was reading the carpenter. Awesome. I've got a couple people. Oh, wait a minute. That was you. <laughs> I thought it was someone else too, but okay. So you're, you're the one reading the carpenter. Great book, easy read. Um, and probably something we should go back and read time and time again. It's a, just a great, great book. All right. Uh, oh, Jennifer's in the house. What's up? Good morning. This beautiful rainy day. It's sunny here. Beautiful here today. Uh, hopefully I'm going to get outside, take another walk. I took a walk this morning, did a little hill climbing, uh, which is always fun. Uh, it actually was pretty fun, but it was, it was hard. Uh, Derek, where's your coffee? So, uh, <laughs> so you don't forget to take a sip right there. There it is. And I, I will, I will take one right now. 
All right, so let's kick it off. Let's uh, let's dig in here. So I titled uh, this coffee talk testing uh, what to test and double down on what's working. So I'm going to give you a few different scenarios. Okay. A lot of times we try to figure everything out before uh, we can actually or before we actually do something. And I want to help you get past that. There's a uh, blog post that we wrote about, let's see here. 10 months ago. Okay. It was written in like August, August, like 15th of 2019. And that piece of content was our very early piece of content that was written for this one site that we're building. Okay. And we're we're actually building this inside of brand creators Academy and all of our Academy members know what that is. And our Pinterest workshop, uh, traffic workshop attendees now know what that niche is, but that's not really important. What's important is, is we look back at that, at that piece of content and we're like, Ooh, it's not really as good as we're doing now, but it's something right. And here's the other thing. Now that we were able to put something out there and plant that seed, we noticed that two months ago, just under two months ago, we started seeing a little bit of a tick up in the traffic and we're like, Oh, what's going on here? And I didn't really, I didn't really notice it until this month or last month, May. I was like, wait a minute here. One of our top three posts is something I haven't seen come up on the analytics in a while, right? Like I haven't seen it at all. And so I started digging into the data and I'm like, oh my gosh, that thing was written back in August and it was only one post and it was shorter than our normal ones now. And it just wasn't that great. And so, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't what we're creating now because we've gotten better. But my point is we were able to now look back 10 months later and go, holy mackerel, that thing's starting to take off. Then this morning I actually went through and I I updated a few things on the post because now I'm like, okay, we're starting to get traffic. So now we can test things with that traffic because now we got eyeballs, right? So now what we're testing is instead of it being an affiliate offer in there, like in a, well, it is an affiliate offer, but not for a physical product. We're actually, we're playing with a digital product product. It's a, basically a digital guide that they're selling on ClickBank. Someone had, had, uh, created it and then we're just an affiliate for it. Now it's a good product. And it's, uh, I think the product is like 35 bucks or 40 bucks. And we get like 75% of that sale because they're going to make it up on the back end. So we're going to pay like 20, 25 bucks for each sale. So this morning, literally I went into the post. I added two, uh, two parts to the, uh, two little uh, banners, uh, on the blog post. And I added one in the sidebar and I'm done now. Right. And now the thing is, is I'm going to be able to look back and go, okay, how did it do last week? Oh, we got one sale. Cool. Okay. So we got 45, 50 visitors a day. Actually, some days we're getting like 75 to a hundred, but okay. Let's just say 50 to 75. And over the course of a week, we sold one, two, three, whatever, now we can start to play with that. We're like, okay, cool. Now maybe we need to great create more pins that are going to bring attention to that post, right? Maybe we're going to email our list about that post. Maybe we're going to post it on Facebook. Maybe we're going to run a Facebook ad to that post now, right? So there's a lot we can do and test once we have the eyeballs, right? But in order to get the eyeballs, we got to do something. We got to, we got to actually put a test in place, right? And so If you're thinking to yourself that you're waiting until you have the perfect post or the perfect video or the perfect pin before you actually put it out there, you're actually limiting yourself on what you can achieve. So I really want to encourage you to get it good enough and then post it or, you know, uh, create it, then post it. Because if you do that, then we're able to look at the results. So I'll give you another example. Uh, email, email is another great place to test, right? You may send out an email with one subject line and go, Oh, they got like a 12% open rate. It's pretty good, but okay. Why don't you test that? Why don't you split test that? Why don't you send one with that subject line? And then maybe on your unopens, you send it with another subject line and you just test the two and you're like, Oh wow, that one did better than that one. Or rate in convert kit. You can actually set it up to run a split test. It'll take your list and it'll send to 50% of the list. It'll send one subject line 
to the other 50% and it'll send another subject line. And then immediately we can test the two side by side, right? And we can go, oh, people, you know, they resonate with that more than that, right? So if we test, we get results. If we get results, we can ask questions, how to make it better? How did it work? How did it react? But if we don't have that stuff in place, we can't test, right? So we need to get things in motion, okay? That's, it's the biggest thing is to get things in motion. If we get things in motion, guess what? We're going to be able to see a result. And if we see a result, we can ask more questions, right? Um, so that's on email. Now, one thing that I would say is do not, do not over test. What do I mean? Well, if you are, let's say that you are, uh, you have a post and you're like, okay, now that I think that it's getting traffic, I'm going to try to get it even more traffic and I'm going to change the headline or the, you know, the title of the post. I'm going to change images. I'm going to, I'm going to change buttons. I'm going to put a different offer in there. And then I'm going to see what that does too many variables now. Right? So we want to test one thing at a time. So see on that post that I was mentioning, that's starting to get traffic, right? It's getting about two to you know, probably about 2000, it's a little over 2000. I think it was 2,111 to be exact. Um, so it's getting a pretty good amount of traffic right now. So instead of me going and putting two different offers in there or changing things up and, uh, you know, adding different subject lines in there or titles or bullets or anything like that, I'm not doing any of that. All I did was I inserted at the top, a banner at the bottom, a banner sidebar banner. So this way here I can do it. And then I can look and track what banner got the most clicks. You can do that too, but I'm not changing anything else. Okay. If I'm sending an email, I'm going to do one thing, subject line, right? Did it work? Now, the only thing that I, I would say with an email, you could, you could test subject line and you can test the click through because an open that's one test inside the email. Once people see it, there's also another test that can be performed and that is getting a click, right? So we could do those two side by side. We could but you don't want to over test, right? I see people making this mistake on their Amazon listing. They're like, okay, I'm going to change the image. I'm going to change the title and I'm going to change my bullets. No, change the title, change an image one at a time, and then give it time to perform the test. Um, and then the other thing that I have here in my notes is Facebook ads. If you are uh, running Facebook ads to your lead magnet or to your giveaway or your contest, you probably want to perform a few tests there. And you want to see which one does better, especially when you're spending money. When you're spending money, you definitely want to do some tests, right? Because then you, you're like, well, wait a minute here. If I can, if I can outperform that one, even by 50 cents, I might as well do it, right? Also with paid ads, you're going to get results a lot, lot quicker, but it costs money, right? And it's not like evergreen. It's not like you're going to be able to have that produce itself over and over and over again, unless you keep spending money. So there's pros and cons to that. We're actually running through um, a little bit of an experiment right now as we speak uh, that we're going to be putting into motion probably today. Uh, Chris was working on some stuff yesterday, um, and we just have different offers that we're going to be presenting, um, and we're going to see how it performs, and that's going to be with paid traffic, um, not to our our uh, niche site that we're building. This is more for the podcast type stuff, not the podcast, but more of brand creators um, because we're trying to bring awareness to Brand Creators Academy. You guys know that, right? So um, this is our lead magnet right here. So we're doing stuff with this um, and we're going to uh, just try to do a better job of communicating what it is and who it's for. Um, and then also creating a, an offer that is like a no brainer. Um, so you're always doing those things to try to outperform what has happened before, right? But you got to test. doesn't matter if it's organic traffic. It doesn't matter if it's uh, email. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook ads or if it's a sales page or anything like that. You got to be testing, but you also have to have something that's live and in motion, live and in motion. Um, so do you guys have any quick questions on that before we uh, go any further here? Uh, let's see. Lloyd, what's up, man? Good morning to you. Kay, what is up? Good morning. Raymond, or Rimmon, I'm sorry. Uh, is it Ryman? Uh, thank you for the videos. No problem. Uh, this is awesome advice. Retesting. Yes. Uh, do you ever respond to negative reviews and check reviews of others that are negative to test on your blog and write articles and post to address these issues and by getting people to read these articles with a free tips, et cetera? 
I'm not quite sure I understand that. Do I respond with negative reviews and check reviews of others? So do you mean, do I like call them out and say like, Hey, so-and-so said this. And so you're going to kind of get that controversy thing going. No, I wouldn't do that. I don't like that play. Um, would I now say that there's people that are complaining about something and I would address that? Yes, we would definitely do that. You know, most people are saying that they wish that some of the well-known companies that are creating fishing lures would do this, that, and the other thing. Well, I, you know, if I create, or when I create a product, I would do this and this is why, or in our product, we do fix these problems. Here's why, right? Yeah, I would do that, but I definitely would not like try to play it against, uh, someone else. I, I don't like that angle. Um, to be honest, uh, let's see, do you use Google analytics to test? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes if it's far as traffic, but really like, so let's go back. Like on that one blog post, I discovered that by looking at my analytics. So every day I go into my an analytics, it takes me like five minutes. I go there, I have my coffee, I log in and I look at my analytics and I look at, there's like, what do I look at? Three different brands right now. And, uh, I just look at the data and the main thing I look at is what, um, what pages are getting, uh, are getting traffic. And then sometimes you'll see one that's popping up that you didn't see last week. Right. And so I usually look at the last seven days. And then after that, I'll go, uh, the last 30. Um, and then that way there, I can kind of see what's a rising star, right? Like what is starting to come up. And then this one identified itself. So that's how I found it. But then to do the other side of the test, we're going to now, we're adding this, uh, this affiliate offer to this post that's getting traffic. And then the test is going to be testing that product and seeing if we're going to get a sale, right? So that's the, the second part of that test, but we identified it in Google analytics, but you can set it up in Google analytics to track sales too. Just not if you're like an affiliate though, that wouldn't, that wouldn't really work. Mike Smiley in the house. Good morning, sir. Uh, let's see. Oh, Mark Lenore. What's up? Good morning to you. Uh, Derek, I keep hearing about Facebook apps to promote stuff. Is this something we should concentrate on to get leads and information out to our followers? Facebook apps. I'm not sure what you mean, Derek. Um, if again, Derek, if it doesn't fall within my guidelines, my box, uh, that we talked about in a past coffee talk, uh, I'm not probably doing it like Facebook apps. I don't know what you mean there. Uh, here's the simple funnel flow. Okay. Very, very simple. You have a lead magnet. You have a thank you page. We just sent you an email with your download link or with your thing, right? And that page could have an offer on it. And then if they go through the checkout, you can have a, what we call an order bump or an upsell. And that's it. That's the funnel, right? No, like we're not even playing with messenger right now. Does it work for some others? Yes. Are we focusing there? No, um, I literally just got off a, uh, call yesterday with some of my mastermind friends, um, that I was in a mastermind, a paid mastermind about a year and a half ago, and we still get together. Um, I'm not in that group anymore. Um, but, um, this one, um, this one person, I'm not going to mention their name. Um, they're crushing it right now with paid ads and exactly that, that funnel is it. It's like some type of checklist or guide. And then once they opt in, they go to a thank you page. It says, we just sent you your, um, your download. And then, um, while they're on that page, they're going to get an offer for 50% off of something that's related to what they just downloaded. And that's it. And that thing there, I think she's spending, I think she spent like 20 grand on ads, but she took in 50 grand. I would do that all day long. Um, I haven't had that kind of success with a simple funnel like that but I am testing it now, right? So we got off of that call yesterday and I'm like, call up Chris. I'm like, we got some testing to do, right? Because that proved to me that I should probably test that out. And so what we're going to do is test it, right? So we're just going to get it as soon as we can, right? Get it in place. And uh, that should be probably phase one of that test should probably be happening today. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. How long should you let a paid ad run before you test? Well, you are, you're testing from day one, but I mean, I'd say probably three to five days, depending on how much money you're spending too. Uh, you know, like right now we have a short window between now and brand creators Academy. So, you know, we're going to ramp it up a little bit 
harder and a little bit, a little bit more spend because we have a shorter window. Um, so, but usually you want to start small and then build up and scale up. Uh, Mike, something to, I find very helpful from our coffee talk is the mental dialogue you take us through that identifies exact thoughts and conflicts we're having and helping walk us through the rationale helps clear some confusion. That's good, Mike. Um, and I don't even realize I'm doing that to be honest with you. Uh, I'm just, I'm just talking through it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just talking through it. And, uh, I think what you're saying is that helps, right? When I kind of talk through that stuff. Um, but yeah, and if you ever have an example or something you want me to kind of walk through, let me know. And I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, how do you calculate the average cost to acquire a customer and the average value of a customer? How often do you calculate? Uh, well, okay. That's a little bit complicated. Uh, and really that's probably a whole nother talk, but basically you just need to know how much you're paying for a lead and how long does it take for that lead to turn into, um, a customer. So sometimes it takes 30 days. Sometimes it takes 60 days it take 90 days. Right. And so if you can figure that part out, then you're saying, okay, I'm willing to, to outlay the money for 30 days. Cause I know in 30 days, it's probably going to, it's probably going to, um, work out. Right. But that's where you would come up with, and, and that's where that test would come out. You have to, you have to do that and test it over and over again. So, um, that's really how you figure that out. Like how much was the ad cost? How long does it take you to get back the initial investment? And then when does it turn into profit? So it's, that takes a little bit of time to calculate. Um, but in the beginning, you're going to eat up some cash in the beginning to test before you actually start to become positive. Um, okay. Uh, I tried to join, and this is a uh, protein hacks. I forget who, who it is too, by the way. Uh, I tried joining the Facebook group yesterday and got in the discussion. Not sure if it was accepted. What Facebook group is that? I'm just curious. So I can make sure that if you're supposed to be in that group, if it's because we have private groups, um, that are for our brand creators Academy. And, um, that might be the one I'm not sure. Uh, do you ever review the blogs of others in your field to get ideas? Uh, Honestly, not for this. Like, I don't really, I don't look at my competition in this. I just do what I know needs to be created. Like, I don't, I don't do a lot of research on my competitors in this space. Um, now, if it was other niches, probably would do more. And I actually do more for keyword research. We do. Uh, let's see. Do you use click funnels for your funnels? Uh, we have. And we have still like one funnel built in there. We had about, oh gosh, too many. We had too many. Um, that's why this year we've simplified. Right now we're using uh, Kajabi. We're using Kajabi for all our funnels. Um, so um, this little book funnel here, this goes through Kajabi right now. So we're switching it. We switched everything. We made it a, a conscious decision to do that um, probably around two months ago. And now we're almost a hundred percent. We still have a couple of things I think on click funnels, but we're migrating them off. Um, but, um, yeah, I just like to keep things in one area. I like click funnels. If you're not running a membership site, then probably click funnels would work. Um, but Kajabi has all of that stuff built in. It has landing pages. It even has email if you want to use their email platform. Um, but it is, it's about the same price as, as uh, click funnels. Debbie, what's up? Good morning to you as well. Oh, Ashley, thank you. Thank you. You get uh, an extra credit point for that. Which, um, gang, I'm also going to be working on some shirts. I said this before, and I really want you guys to shoot a quick video. Very short. Let me know what the, what the uh, coffee talks are doing for you. Shout out the Take Action crew. If you do that, I'm going to be sending you a shirt. All you need to do is tag me at Scott Volker and just put it in uh, Facebook and I'll see it. Or just send me an email, scott at brandcreators.com. If you do that, it allows me to share it with other people, get other people wanting to come over and join. You guys know how that works. And uh, I'm going to be creating some uh, pretty cool t-shirts. Actually, one is coming, should be here this week. I'm really excited to see that one. And I've got a few ideas for a few others, um, but I'm thinking about creating one that's just take action crew. and. Um, you know, if you guys, uh, you guys create that video for me, uh, I'll send you one. 
You just gotta, you just gotta do the, uh, do the work. Uh, let's see, uh, Debbie, any suggestions for writing content? I'm having a tough time finding things to write about in depth at this point. I'm good at, I'm good for a sentence or three, but then, uh, and I can't read the rest here for some reason. Um, well, okay. Yeah. And we can do a whole nother coffee talk on this. We've done some in the past. If you guys are watching this, go into the uh, description. We'll drop that in there. We have a playlist for all the coffee talks, um, on, on YouTube. Um, and then this way here, you can go through that stuff, but, um, your biggest thing is, is just going through the exercise of going to Google. If that's where your market is, which I I'm pretty sure it will be. Um, and then just doing some auto suggest and seeing some common questions. I'm telling you, most people, they try to go out there and create a whole bunch of how to content first. And that seems to be harder questions, questions, right? Or, uh, the five best fishing lures for, for, uh, or ponds or, you know, for catching bass in ponds, like something like that. I'm telling you, like, just, you need to explore the questions angle and that will be your long tail. It's easier to rank for. You'll start to get some momentum quicker than trying to go after just bass fishing. Right. Um, so that's what I would do. I would go after questions. You guys know, I talk about this in the playbook. It's, uh, you have to go after questions. That's your questions bucket. Then you go with a how to bucket and then you go with your products bucket. That's it. Three buckets. Uh, I like the shirt, uh, sir. First, where did you get that? That's a shirt from my friend, uh, Pat Flynn, uh, which actually I was on a call with him yesterday, which went really well. Um, really awesome guy. Um, let's see here. Oh, what do you think about convert kit? It's like click funnels without the big price. No convert kit is different. Convert kit is not a, uh, a funnel builder, if you will. Um, it has some page building in there, but very limited. Um, so, uh, Convert kit to me is just an autoresponder an uh, an email, um, uh, CRM, if you will. Um, and I use it. That's the only one we use now. I've gotten rid of everything else. Uh, I used to use a Weber. I used to use, uh, active campaign Infusionsoft. Uh, let's see which other ones MailChimp, all of them convert kit. And if you want to get a little bonus, if you go through our, uh, our convert kit, uh, affiliate link. All you need to do is go to brandcreators.com forward slash convert kit. And you can go there. There's a free trial there. You can actually get a, a free account, uh, up to, I think a thousand emails. And, um, if you go through my link, send me an email, Scott at brandcreators.com. Let me know that you went through my link and I'll send you, uh, some email templates that you can have for promotions. Uh, okay. Any other quick questions here before we wrap up today? I do have a live call for our Pinterest traffic workshop, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to be doing that with my daughter today, my oldest daughter. She's the one that's actually teaching the Pinterest traffic workshop, which is closed right now, but we are in our uh, last part of week one. And then week two, we'll start tomorrow or uh, Monday. We'll start Monday and then we'll be doing another, another live call for that next week. We've got about five accounts to review today and we're going to be doing some Q and a. So if you guys are in a Pinterest traffic workshop, you should have received an email with that link, um, to join us. It's going to be a zoom call. Also, if you're in brand creators Academy, we also send an email out to you guys and we send it out in the uh, Facebook group. Um, so this way here, you guys have access to that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Scott, Derek was talking about, uh, oh, con convert tree try. Uh, I don't think I've heard of that. Not convert kit. I thought it was just misspelled. Hmm. Yeah. I haven't even heard of that one. Uh, K, uh, when should you consider using Clavio? I don't know that you need to. To be honest with you, I, I just think whatever platform that you're going to, you're going to um, start with, it should be the one you're going to grow with. So if you have any type of ideas or, as far as like, I want to go on Clavio eventually, cause it's a, it's more expensive. It's more complex. Um, sure. There's a lot of cool things that you can do in there, but it can also get over complicated. So I don't necessarily think that you have to have Clavio. Um, Clavio is more built for e-commerce. Um, but it doesn't have to be used just for um, e-commerce, but you can do a lot of cool things with convert kit too. I don't necessarily think that you need to use Clavio. Um, but if that's what you are aiming for, then I would start now 
versus trying to learn a system, build all your funnels and your, you know, your autoresponders and then have to migrate everything over. That's just a nightmare. Take it from me. I've done it and it's not fun. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure that I would, um, go down that road unless you are like, I, I want to go Clavio. I'm, I've just been impressed by whomever. And, uh, I just want to, I want to model that then, then go for it. Um, there is a huge learning curve there from what I've gathered. Um, so hopefully, um, that makes sense and that helps you. Um, so guys, any last quick questions here before we wrap, uh, and also do me a favor. Um, let someone know about our coffee talks. I would love for you to invite someone here um, that you think that would uh, that would be part of our take action crew in the morning. Um, you know, I show up here to help serve you guys and to give you guys more of what you need and what you want. But I also want you to bring new people, right? I want to have more people come here. Um, this is all word of mouth. I'm not like promoting this or anything like that. So um, yeah, if you guys would do that, that would be awesome. And then uh, also. Uh, if you want to, um, yeah, you want to attend tomorrow, I forgot what I was going to say, uh, 10 AM Eastern time. We're going to do a Sunday edition. We're going to probably, um, talk more on the current situation that we're in. Um, and then also try to just build each other up with a little bit of positivity on a Sunday. Um, so, um, yeah, so that, that'll be tomorrow. And then if you have any future coffee talks that you want to, uh, dig into, let me know. You can drop them in the comments here, uh, or you can, um, you know, you can just, uh, let me know on whatever platform that you're watching this right now. If you're on YouTube, you can drop it in a comment. If you're on Facebook, you can do it there. Um, Oh, Rebecca, I didn't receive the email for the Pinterest Q and a, but can you send an email of what I have done so far? Uh, yeah, Rebecca, um, send me an email. Scott at brandcreators.com. I'll send you that. You should have received an email. Everyone that joined um, should have received an email. We sent out multiple emails, probably three at this point as reminders and also check-ins throughout the week. Um, so make sure you do that. That's what I'm going to do now once I get off here is I have to go in and make sure that um, everyone has has access. Everyone that has questions are going to be getting answered. So I got a little bit of work there to do myself right now, making sure that the room's all uh, ready to go. Um, but yeah, send me an email, uh, scott at brandcreators.com. Do that now. That way I get it. And um, we can go ahead and make sure that we get those questions answered um, and also make sure that you get the link so you can join us because um, that's how we're doing it. We're doing it through Zoom. All right. So um, gang. Hopefully you have an amazing day. Derek, what did you say here? I just seen you pop through. These talks are expanding my mind of what to do and what not to do. That's awesome. And I'm really glad to hear that, Derek. Really glad to hear that. So again, guys, if you have anything you want me to discuss uh, on future Coffee Talks, drop them in the comments. And then also, if you want to go back and listen to maybe one Coffee Talk that will help you right now, I would encourage you to go right here, if you're watching this on YouTube, right here. And this will take you to a playlist that will have all the coffee talks. I don't want you to go through all of them today. I want you to pick one that will help you right now and then go through that and then take action. That way there, we can start testing things, right? If we can test things, we get results. If we get results, we can make adjustments. We can change things. We can see improvements. We can, we can see things that are working and do more of it, which would be awesome, right? But we got to actually do the work, right? We got to put something in play. In order to get a result, we got to run the play like you would in a football game or, you know, do something in soccer or any, any sporting event, right? We got to get in the game. We can't stand on the sidelines. So we need to get in that game. All right. All right, guys. So that is it. That's going to wrap up today's little coffee talk. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And until then, take care, take action, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.